You're listening to the Better for America podcast presented by AMAC, the Association of Mature American Citizens. Hello, everyone. I'm Rebecca Weber. This is your AMAC podcast, Better for America. And if you haven't yet subscribed to Better for America, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now so that you never miss an episode of this show. And today we have with me, with us one of my friends, a very dynamic, a courageous, and a much admired guest, someone that I truly draw inspiration from. And that person is Martha Bonetta. Now, Martha is um, really committed to so much about what we all believe in, from our Bill of Rights to the American dream. And in a word, Martha is a patriot, one who in our time, she is really the living, a living resolve to make a difference, to defend our rights, and to take the risks necessary to get those things done. Her childhood dream was to be a farmer. And when a combination of activists and entrenched government interests got in her way of her dream, she was not about to give up. Having battled for rights she knew she had, she has become a voice for the rights of all Americans. So I'm thrilled to have you with us, Martha. Help me welcome a friend of mine, a friend of AMAC, a great American patriot, Martha Bonetta. Martha, thanks for being with me. Thank you so much, Rebecca. It is such a privilege, and I am so grateful for everything you do, uh, for giving a voice to so many Americans, literally millions of Americans, and it's just a privilege and an honor to know you. I'm so grateful for everything you and AMAC do. Oh, thank you for that. You really are the perfect person today to offer perspective on on a lot of different issues, Martha. So I do wanna turn to the intersection of farming and national security. Now, obviously Americans need a reliable source of high quality, affordable food. Uh, We're always going to need that. And farmers who turn the land to good use with God's help, of course, uh, and by hard work are so vital And so is farmland in America. And we're getting reports, Martha, that are so disturbing. We're hearing that communist China is really seeking to buy up incrementally, but very methodically, it seems, much of the world's farmland. Uh, And I have some numbers here that are really making the point that relates to farmland in America. We had an article up on AMAC.us recently. Uh, Let me just share with you some of the numbers. China's overseas direct investment in food producing Uh, acreage has grown tenfold in 10 years. So I'm going to have you comment on that. Uh, By 2020, China had amassed 35.2 million acres of farmland. Can you speak to this? And what should we know? Well, first of all, farmers are the heartbeat and backbone of America. And the small family farmer has struggled for quite some time to maintain the the family farm. You know, most American farmers earn pennies on the dollar in terms of, you know, what they they produce and the labor that that goes into it. And what we've seen, and it started with China buying up the largest pork producer in the world. And that pork producer uh, is from Virginia. And in acquiring Smithfield, not only did China acquire the intellectual property behind Smithfield, but they purchased all of the acreage that went along with the production of pork in the United States. And uh, that alone is a threat to have the largest pork production in the world owned by China that's based here in the United States. But more than that, China is in the process of gobbling up American farmland. And that poses a great threat to our nation because in doing so, um, imagine having China Uh, a country that wants to destroy the American dream, owning our food supply and production. And as you said, they've been acquiring millions of acres of farmland all over the world. They also have over 50% of the world supply of reserves in terms of corn and wheat. And that's just corn and wheat. They also own the greatest, over 50% of the world supply of all different types of other grains that we all need day in and day out to survive. And, you know, really, this isn't even a partisan issue. It doesn't matter whether you're a Republican, Democrat, independent, undecided, you should be very concerned that our food supply is in jeopardy. You know, we're all seeing the rise of gas at the gas pumps and what this means in terms of the shelves and the grocery stores. Uh, You know, uh, we have uh, people sending in pictures from all over the country with bare shelves. And that, of course, is being blamed on uh, the the supply chain. But imagine China owning and possessing the majority of our food production and how they'll be able to control what we receive 
uh, in our in our everyday daily lives that we need to live to raise our families to survive. It really is just amazing. I don't think the average American is aware that uh, uh, China bought food producers in America's heartland that they uh, are growing at an average of I think it's 2.3 million acres per year since 2015. Uh, and this is a really serious issue because, as you say, uh, if China controls more and more of uh, U.S. farmland uh, worth billions, uh, legislation really needs to be uh, put in place to stop China from buying up U.S. farmland. This is a threat that we should be thinking harder about. Uh, I'm glad that you're talking about it. And also, um, you know, a lot of the re these reasons, I believe, also are tied because the ingredients for certain drugs can be found through these various uh, products that um, are basically food products, essentially. Um, Absolutely correct, and and it's it's uh, it's so alarming because you know this is a systematic plan that China has in place. They play the long game. They look hundreds of years in the future, and they want to dominate the world. And there's an expression, you know, um, control the food and you control the people. So this is not only a threat to the ability of Americans having access to healthy food, uh, an abundance of healthy food, but it's also a national security issue. When you think about our food supply um, being in the control of China, that's been stealing our intellectual property forever. And so the good news is, is that there is legislation that is being presented now. And what it does is it prevents China from acquiring production agriculture in our country, in particular the land. And we all know that freedom stands on the shoulders of property rights. And I'm pleased to say that it's a bipartisan bill uh, as, it, as it should be because this affects every American. I mean, we're one of the few countries in the world and we're the greatest nation in the world. And yet we allow foreign governments to possess and own our production agricultural land, which is unheard of. I mean, nobody's, nobody can buy an inch of land in China. And yet China is able to gobble up some of our most productive agricultural land in our beautiful nation. So um, I'm very pleased about this legislation. We're hoping and praying that it does pass and um, it, it should have support uh, from all over the country. And if it doesn't, we really need to put pressure on those legislators to, um, to make them know how much that the American people care about our, our food supply and where it's coming from and to, and to protect its safety and, and purity and to keep it in American, farm, in American farmers' hands. Uh, because American farmers are the greatest producers in the world. And uh, we have all kinds of strict regulations here in our nation in terms of our food production that simply do not exist uh, in, in foreign land. So um, we're hopeful and pray, praying that the bill passes. And we also want to shine a huge light on, on the threat of China to our national security and to our food supply. Thank you, Martha. I know that you are one of the most uh, valuable, uh, you know, analysts in this area because you know farming really up close and personal, and you know the vital nature of our dependence on farmers. Uh, you know how hard farming is, how much our nation's security depends on farmers and farmland. Um, so if you were to step back and look at this Chinese push to buy up farmland in the context of the wider threat posed by China, uh, you agree this is this is very serious. I guess to put it differently, uh, we see the Biden White House giving China a free pass on literally everything from overrunning freedoms in Hong Kong and uh, <clears throat> you know corralling uh, religious minorities, threatening Taiwan, uh, pushing military dominance at sea. Uh, so this attempt to buy up farmland around the world <clears throat> really does seem, that it's another way to make the West dependent on China now for food and pharmaceuticals. Oh, absolutely. And you're exactly correct in terms of the relationship between the farm pharmaceutical industry and our food supply. There is a direct link there. Uh, it's a national security issue. And it's something that basically we've been asleep. I mean, America has allowed this to happen and uh, it needs to stop. And I'm so grateful that President Donald J. Trump and the you know, Trump pension administration shined a light for the first time ever on uh, the threat China poses to the American way of life and the American dream. And, uh, you know, in doing so for the first time ever, we've been able to really track and uh, and pay attention to to this threat. And the, the food supply is the key to dominating the world when you think about it. And what China has done in acquiring these millions of acres of of farmland all over the world is to really create food dominance. 
And, and that's yeah. very threat, not only to our nation, but to every country in the world. Yeah, we'll be watching that legislation carefully uh, and keeping people who are, you know, pe keeping people apprised, uh, certainly. Martha, I want to ask you, help our members understand a little bit about the agricultural and farm, you know, agriculture and farming itself. Um, the economy is challenged by so many federal mandates, supply chain issues, uh, COVID restrictions. Uh, we see this uh, artificially tight labor market. Uh, and since people have been really getting paid to stay at home, what should Americans know about the difficult and vital role placed by America's farmers? What are the challenges you see them facing today beyond the new threat from China to buy up farmland? Well, you know, um, regulation, regulation, regulation. It's, um, it's increasingly more difficult for American farmers to survive in, in, in a climate that has so much regulation and burdensome red tape. And it's, it's from the small family producer to the large, large production agriculture. Uh, it's always been in place. It's always been a threat to, to um, farming and agricultural production. And then, you know, there's a, a huge push. Americans want to know where their food comes from. And, you know, given the choice, most Americans will, will buy American. But, you know, now when we go to the grocery store, it's not always the case that we know where our beef is coming from. And we're having huge imports of beef coming in from all over the world and um, Amer very cheap beef coming in and, and, and cheap produce. And again, um, in many cases, the, the safety of the food production is, is not the same as it, here, as it is here in the United States. And one of the things that we'd like to see is Americans want to know where their food is coming from um, alongside of alongside where it says what the, what the fat and caloric content is. It should also say produced in the USA, produced in Mexico, produced in Canada, wherever the food is coming from, Americans have a right to know where their food is coming from and then be able to make the choice. Of, of where they want to buy their food from. And so uh, that's something that we, we hope to see in the near future. We hope to know where our food is, is actually coming from so that Americans can buy American and support uh, the, American, the American farmer. And also know that in buying American produced food, they're buying the highest quality food in the world that is the safest and is um, food produced by American farmers on American soil. And in doing so, that will keep the um, production in our country alive and thriving. And, um, and also by not allowing foreign entities to come in and own and possess uh, our, our food production. Oh, Martha, that uh, sounds like a lot of common sense, and you certainly are a voice of common sense and a voice of courage, really, in this time of fear. I want to expand a little bit. Uh, based on your life history, Martha, and your tenacity in the face of threats, what advice might you give to people listening who get a bit down about the dysfunction and the power of government? Um, you know, we, we, we see so many uh, people are demoralized in a sense. Uh, we see a lack of accountability. Um, where do you draw your hope from and how would you offer people listening to remain optimistic during this time of what we feel is very uh, strong anti-American sentiment and challenging crosswinds <laughs> that we're facing? You know, I, I, I grew up in a hardworking family, my, I'm the youngest of three girls. Mm. Uh, my mom and my dad taught us that we live in the greatest nation on earth, no matter who you are, no matter where you come from, no matter the color of your skin, if you work hard, we can be anything we want in life. And as you said, the American dream is, is being threatened. You know, I know firsthand what it's like to have the heavy weight of, of government over regulation and burdens and red tape, you know, threaten my family's ability to survive on, on the farm. And I can tell you, and I believe this with every breath I take of the, of the power of one, and that is that, you know, one person really can make a difference. And that, you know, with faith and hard work, we can organize our communities. We can uh, overcome burdensome over regulation. And, and to know that at the end of the day, we truly, truly live in the greatest nation on earth and we must fight with every breath we take to save and protect the American dream for generations to come. And it's my hope and my prayer, and I know it to be true, that by organizing, by, by organizations like AMAC that, that organize and bring people together, you know, together we are able to overcome 
uh, a lot of the challenges that are in our place and the hurdles that are created through bureaucratic red tape over regulation. Even the example I just gave of, of knowing where our food is coming from, it's because of everyday hardworking Americans that came together and said, no, this is ridiculous. When we go to the store, I wanna know where the food I'm putting on my family's plate comes from. And it started off with a small group of, of parents that wanted to know where their children's food was coming from and they fought hard. Uh, to make sure that they could have a choice. When they go to the grocery store, they want to buy American food produced on American is, land. That's right. You know, the best wow. in the world. Um, and so, you know, that's how it started. And it's become a national movement and uh, and got the attention of the legislators. And, you know, together we're, we're fighting to, to make sure that, you know, Americans, no matter where you are in our beloved country, you know where, where our food comes from. But that came from hardworking people that organized they didn't have fancy lobbyists and they didn't have um, the the uh, the gravitas of, you know, Washington, D.C. Uh, fighting for them. It's we the people that come together and fight and and ultimately can can win. And it's incredible organizations like AMEC that that make that possible by giving a voice well, to so many. Right. We're, and we are ever, we're excited. We're very hopeful for 2022. We see it as a very big year ahead of us. And for all Americans, really, who want accountability in government, who want limited government, uh, greater respect for basic rights. And so 2024 is really going to be a big year, uh, an even bigger year than 2022. But as you look forward and you're thinking about what the Supreme Court may do uh, at the promise of the 2022 midterm elections, do you think 2022 could be a year of big change you know, return to core values because see, we see we see what what how the Supreme Court is ruling on on these these major um, decisions at that level. Uh, we, we're seeing what I think is a return uh, to our core values, and maybe um, uh, just a, a, a that that gives me hope, and it should give everyone hope listening. So I'm personally hoping that it's going to be a great year. But what do you think 2022 might bring? Uh, you know, listen, faith, family, freedom you know, core values that our nation was founded on, uh, elections have consequences. They really do. And, and most Americans vote with their pocketbooks. During the Trump-Pence administration, we had energy independence for the first time at that level ever. Uh, we were producing our own energy at record levels. Unemployment was at an all-time low. We had secure borders. The economy was booming. Americans had hope for the future. And as we see now, you know, with the, with the, you know, they're expecting gas prices across our country to soar well over $4 a gallon. They're expecting, you know, food shortages to continue. I mean, you know, without having an administration in place that wants to make America first, without an America first platform, which we do not have with this administration, we are seeing the, the, the effects of that. You know, elections have consequences. And I, I know that in the midterms, we are going to go back to our core values. Um, the polling shows that Americans are absolutely frustrated with the current administration. They're, they're saddened by seeing the destruction of, of so many principles that were put in place. Our borders aren't secure. The economy is, is a wreck. Uh, the cost of everything, everyday goods is soaring. And you know, when we, what we're gonna see in the midterms is that Americans are gonna come out to vote in full force and bring back our, our hardworking American values that are gonna make sure that the American dream is alive and well. I'm excited, I'm hopeful, and um, I just pray and hope that uh, we will see the victories that I fully expect. Oh, Martha, what a breath of encouragement and uh, really fresh insight. Thank you so much. I pre appreciate you being here with us today. Uh, love your strong convictions and the hope that you give us all. So thank you for your time with us. Thank you, God bless you and thank you. Thank you. America is certainly better off because of people like you that are fighting to protect our wonderful rights. And we, we just uh, recognize that one person can make a difference. You, Martha, are a living example of that. So thank you again. And I want to thank everybody listening, all of our members and those tuning in. Thank you for tuning in. If you haven't downloaded the AMAC News app, you can watch and listen to today's podcast and track breaking news right there from your smartphone. So make sure to hit that subscribe button, follow, like, and share wherever you are on social media. Until next time, I'm Rebecca Weber. This is your podcast, Better for America. Thank you for being here. God bless you and have a great day, everyone. 
Thank you for listening to the Better for America podcast. To learn more about AMAC and all it has to offer, visit us at www.amac.us.